I have here Piso. Piso was cut at the beginning of the DVD and it's the contrast fabric that you're going to use to bind the bag with. First step, take your ruler and mark a dark line with your little sharpie that's one half inch up from the edge. Now piece O, you actually have two pieces here. I just have one laying on top of the other. So I'm marking my line. I'm going to turn it over and mark the piece on the bottom. And then what I want you to do next is I want you to separate the two pieces and I want you to pin them together with the lines that you marked facing each other. So they should be in. Those dark lines should be facing in, touching each other. Then I want you to pin your ends here and then I want you to go to your machines and I want you to sew half inch seams on both sides. So we want to sew both of these ends together. So go do that. We'll meet back here. I'm at the machine with the contrast binding and these are the seams that we're going to be sewing right now, half inch away from the raw edge. Now your black lines should be underneath this top piece of fabric. They should be facing each other you're going to ignore those right now. We're not sewing anything with those black lines right yet. We're only sewing the side seam here. And you can actually stitch this one with a 2.0 stitch length. Straight stitch. Center needle position. And no need to back tack. Go ahead and sew the other end. And now let's go back to the pressing board. Now what I'd like you to do is I want you to press open those seams that you just sewed at the machine. So what you should have right now is a little circle that you've sewed with this contrast binding. Now I want you to turn down the raw edges so that they meet each other. Do this all the way around. Here's the seam that we sewed right here. Now the seam is on the inside of the binding. So just go around the whole thing, putting your raw edges together. If you have an ironing board, this may be a little easier to do at the ironing board. Now, once you have your raw edges meeting each other, I want you to go ahead and press a crease in the fabric here. Your black line should be looking at you right now. You should be able to see that. That's the black line that we use to sew the half inch seam allowance. Make sure that your edges are really even here because we're going to be sewing on that black line. So if your edges are not even, that means your black line is not in the right spot for sewing. Okay, once you've ironed all the way around there and all the edges are nice and even, we're going to go grab the bag and I'm going to show you how to put this on the bag to bind it. I have the bag and the contrast band here and we're going to place the band around the outside circumference of the bag. We'll be matching raw edges on the bag and the binding. Once you have it on there, first thing I want you to do is match up all your side seams. So that means you're going to match up the side seams from the contrast and the side seams on the bag. 
And when you have those matched up, go ahead and put a couple of pins in there. And then I want you to go around and I want you to match up the side seams on the other side. This is, these are the first pins we put in. Now, one other thing to remember, the black half inch sewing line that we marked, you don't want that facing against the bag. You want that facing you so that you need, you need to be able to see that black line because that's going to be your stitching line when we stitch down this binding. After you have your side seams pinned in, fit the rest of the contrast band in between those side seams. Put in your pins. And then you're going to go and you're going to do the same thing on the front. You're going to fit it in. And then you're going to pin. So go ahead and finish pinning and we'll go over to the machine and we'll sew the binding down. I have the bag positioned on the free arm of my sewing machine and we have the binding right here with our black half inch seam line. So we want to set our needle position to center and we're going to use a straight, straight stitch with a stitch length of 3.0. Now you can start anywhere you want, it doesn't really matter, you're just going to go around in a big circle. So start sewing. If you want to try and use your walking foot here, that may be helpful for you. It's very important to stay on that stitching line right now. You have to pull and tug on the bag a little bit to get it to move around the machine. Also work with your needle down. You know, another reason why it's helpful to mark these lines for you is that your machine may not be calibrated exactly correct. So, in other words, if you want to do a quarter inch seam, you're piecing a quilt, um, you really do need to check your seams all the time to make sure that you're getting a true quarter inch. If you're using that quarter inch piecing foot and you're sewing in a center needle position, it doesn't mean that the machine is calibrated where the needle is exactly in the center where you need it to be to get that quarter inch. But if you're using these lines, these sewing lines, then you're pretty sure that you're going to get an accurate seam. And I know that this particular machine here is not calibrated exactly right when I use my quarter inch foot. So now keep working around until you get back to the beginning. Go slowly. The machine's having to work pretty hard right now. Getting to ready to turn the side again. This is the second side. I'm not using a walking foot, so whenever I get to a spot where it's starting to crumple up on me a little bit, and I don't want to get a little tuck in there, I just put my hands on both sides and I just really stretch it out and that will usually take care of that for me. And I'm coming right back up to the beginning where I started. And I'll just go over about an inch. Don't have to back tack as long as I go over about an inch. And now I'm done with this seam. Okay, I just took the bag out of the machine. And you probably are not able to see my stitching line, but I'll just point to the point to where my stitching line is. At this point, before I do anything else, I just want to take my binding, I want to turn it to the inside, and I want to make sure that that binding is covering over my stitching line, and it is. So that's where you want to be right now. You want to make sure 
the binding is covering your stitching line. If it's not, you either cut incorrectly or you sewed incorrectly. So you would have to go and make an adjustment for that. Now, one more thing we're going to do before we actually go and sew the binding into the inside. I'm going to put the piece back into the machine and I'm going to go around this entire circumference of the, of the top of the bag with a triple zigzag stitch and that's going to make everything nice and strong and secure. I have the bag back in the machine and now I'm going to start sewing that triple zigzag stitch all around the circumference of the bag. I'm going to, with my machine, use the foot that I have here and I'm going to let the inside of the foot right along the raw edge of the bag. So I'm setting my machine to the triple zigzag. I'm at a stitch length of 0.9 and a stitch width of 5.0. My all time favorite stitch on a sewing machine is the triple zigzag. If I could have just two stitches on a sewing machine, it would be straight stitch of course and a triple zigzag. So just continue all the way around until you get back to the beginning again just like we did with the straight stitch when we sewed on the binding. I have the bag here. I've pinned this section down so that you can see what I'm going to do next. We're getting ready to secure the binding down inside the bag. And I'm going to give you two options for doing that. What I'd like you to do is I want you to take your basting tape, your eighth inch basting tape, and I want you to place the tape all along the seam line that you sewed the binding on with. And you're going to go all the way around the bag with this. I just finished applying the basting tape all around the circumference of the bag and remember it's placed right directly above the seam line, the stitching line that's connecting your binding to the bag. So go ahead now and pull all the tape off. I'm going to pull it off all the way around the bag. The paper is now off the tape and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my binding and I'm going to press it down onto the tape and when you do you want to make sure that you're covering that stitching line. Go ahead and do that all the way around the bag now. I'm going to tell you two ways to finish this. My preferred way to finish it is actually to hand stitch it, just the way you would hand stitch down the binding on the back of a quilt. If you don't want to hand stitch it, you can go ahead and stitch in the ditch. And you would stitch in the ditch from this side. You would stitch right in here. If you are going to stitch in the ditch, you need to make absolutely sure that that binding is covering, is partially covering the stitching line. If you pull your binding forward and it's not covering the line, one option for you to do is to go here and trim back just a hair until you can get this to go over the stitching line. That's, that's fine to do. I've done it before and you can go ahead and try that and see if that will um, work a little easier for you. If that still is not working for you, then you probably need to go and cut out a wider piece of contrast. So go ahead now and secure down the binding all the way around and then decide which way you want to finish it. I will stitch in the ditch a little bit for you at the machine so that you can see how to do that. I finished turning my binding to the inside of the bag. I've pressed it down into the basting tape and my fold of the binding is covering the stitching line. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this in the ditch for you so you can see how to do that. Just make sure before you start that you are covering all of those stitching lines. The machine is um, set up now for the, to do the stitch in the ditch. I have the bag in here and I'm going to sew right in the ditch here. You want to use an open toe foot if you have one at this point. It's much easier to see that ditch. And I'm going to use straight stitch, center needle position with a stitch length of 
And just continue around the entire bag till you get to the point where you started. For those of you who are choosing to hand sew your binding down on the inside of your bag, I'd like to show you this really great little product that I found. It's put out by Clover and it's a needle threader. And these days I can't live without one anymore with, with my aging eyes. So um, I've used many others and they never work right, but this one just works great and it works great every time. So I really did want to share it with you. And I'd like to show you right now how to use it. You're just going to take your hand sewing needle with the eye down you're going to just put it in this tiny little slot here and you don't have to worry about which way the eye is facing you just drop it in there then you pull off your thread and this actually has a nice little thread cutter on it so you can cut your thread and then there's a slot right here you just lay this right down into the slot and then you're going to press this little lever and it, there's a little pin in there that will put the thread through the eye of the needle for you so you just press it and you can actually feel the thread moving into the eye when you do that and you pull out your needle and there's a little tail there where the thread has gone through the eye and you just pull the little tail and your needle is threaded and I, I really do love this product I, can, I can't sew for a very long time anymore by hand my eyes just won't tolerate it so but I find that if I have the needle threader next to me, I can sew longer because part of the problem for me to sew for a long time is threading the needles. Once my eyes start getting too tired, I can't see the eye anymore. So I keep this next to me and even when my eyes do get tired, I just take out the needle threader, I thread up the next needle and I can still go for a little longer. So that's something you might want to consider. We're now completed with the binding. And I do want to reiterate one more time, my preferred method is hand stitching down that binding. I feel like I've put so much time and work and effort into this bag. I want every single part of it to look like really professional show quality. And to me, hand stitching down that binding is the way to go. Now we're going to put the strap into the anchor here. You have the anchor in the first slot you had the strap anchor and in this slot we're going to put the strap. So you want to place it in. When you place it in like this, the seam side should be up. You should be seeing that seam down the center. And then we're going to fold this part back. That's the part that doesn't have the fusible fleece in it. And then we're going to fold it over and we're going to be stitching this down. Now, how far down, how close do you place this seam to the anchor, it's really just a matter of how much space do you need to get your presser foot in there. And I, you know, without the anchor getting in the way. And I, I like to give myself a lot of room with that. So I probably have this maybe about an inch and a half. This fold is about an inch and a half up from the bottom of the anchor. That slit where I put the strap through. So we're going to go over to the machine now and we're going to stitch this down. And you want to make sure that you stitch it down really well because, again, this is taking all the way to the bag. Between this seam here, this seam that's holding the strap really on both sides, plus this, that's really carrying the weight of the bag. So let's go stitch that down. I have the strap underneath the press of foot now, and I've marked a little chalk line here so that you can see where I'm stitching. But basically, I'm going to let the edge of the press of foot right along the edge of the fold here. Now, I want to stitch this down with a triple zigzag. I'm at a 0.9 stitch length and 1.5 stitch width. And we'll go over this probably three times. The machine may need a little help getting started here. So you can help pull it along underneath the foot. Going to go back to the beginning again, stitch over it a second time. Mm -hmm. 
And now I'll be stitching over it a third time. And now you're done sewing down that side of the strap, we'll go and we'll put the other end of the strap through and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to show you now what you need to do with the other end of your shoulder strap. You want to go and get another one of your fabric anchors and we're going to insert it onto this shoulder strap. Now, you want to be working with the shoulder strap that doesn't have the seam in the middle, okay? And then you want the strap anchor to be on the rounded side. And we're going to place the shoulder strap into the first slot. And then we're going to put it through the second slot. So it should be like that, in one slot and out the other. And then we'll move it down a little bit. Okay. Now remember that your rounded side of the anchor is up. Then you're going to take the, the anchor from the side where the strap anchor is. And again, you have the two slots, the stra strap anchors in one, and you have this top slot free. You want to go ahead and put the other end of the shoulder strap into that slot. Now, next thing you want to do, you want to push up a little bit here. So you have a loop. All right, so now you've come through this top slot of the side anchor. And now what we want to do is we want to take this end and we're going to push it up through the slot. Now this is from the bottom of the anchor, not from the rounded side. You want to get it into the slot and pull it through. And it's the slot on this side of the anchor. It's on the far side of the anchor. And now we want to pull this up a little bit, give us a little bit of room to work with here. And now we're going to take the end and we're going to push it through this slot right here. So I'm going to pull everything out of the way. And now I'm going to push it through that second slot. Now you're working from the rounded side of the anchor. You're pushing down from the rounded side. Okay, so now we've taken that end and we've pushed it down through this slot right here. So now we have the end of the strap. It's coming up from the underside of the anchor here through this slot and now it's going back down through the anchor through this second slot over here. And this is the rounded side of the anchor. So what you have basically is your strap has come through that third anchor that we just slid on there a little while ago. It comes up, it goes around, it goes back down the second slot. Then it comes and it curls around and it comes up through this slot right here. It's the same anchor that we used for the strap anchor, only it was the top slot that had not been used yet. So you put it through the top slot then it comes up, around, and then you, from underneath this anchor, you want to pull the end of the strap up into the anchor. So you want to pull the end of the strap up into the anchor, and then you're going to go back down into the slot on the other side. And now you pull that tab through. You pull the end of that shoulder strap through. And now we're going to sew down the ends of this shoulder strap. All 
I have the end of the shoulder strap here and what we want to do is we want to fold it in half. Now, remember our fleece stops right about here. So I'm going to take the end of that shoulder strap and I'm going to fold it right to where the fleece stops on the underside. I put it under my presser foot and I'm going to sew across here two times with this triple zigzag set at a stitch length of 0.9 and a stitch width of 1.5. Now if your machine has a Teflon foot, go ahead and use a Teflon foot here. It'll help this faux suede to glide underneath the presser foot. So sew all the way across. Come back to the start and go over that one more time. Now that you've finished sewing over this seam line two times, we're going to fold it in half one more time. And we're going to position underneath the presser foot and we're going to sew across about three more times. So now you've finished sewing over that three times and what you want to do now is you want to pull that back through the anchor just get a good grab on it and just pull it and you pull this end You pull your strap all the way through the anchor. Get everything to lay nice and flat. And then you're done. You're done sewing in the anchor. And this, this anchor is the slider for your shoulder strap. This is how you will adjust the height of your shoulder strap when you're carrying the bag on your shoulder. Now you guys are done, let's go look at the bag. I hope that everyone has had a good time watching this DVD and that you're all well on your way to completing your first bag. And let's remember, don't limit yourself with style. I have a few examples here. This one here is for my daughter. It's, um, she's a teenager and she just loved this fabric and it's wonderful, fun fabric for her. Of course, we have this beautiful batik bag that we created on the DVD itself. We have a darker color, which is very masculine. Any man would, would be um, proud to carry this one with him. We have the beautiful, beautiful Thread Fusion one, and I can't wait to see what you guys are going to do with your bags. I'd love to see these in quilt shows around the country, and I would just love to see what you guys come up with. And then here's my favorite. Um, this to me is just a very beautiful feminine fabric, and I think I'm probably going to end up carrying this one myself. The other thing, remember, these make wonderful diaper bags. Go ahead and find yourself some beautiful baby fabrics and make a diaper bag for your next grandchild or whatever. Um, I have so many people who have said to me, I'm so tired of the traditional diaper bag. I would love to have a bag like this for a diaper bag. And the other thing is, you might even want to make them a little bit masculine if it's a diaper bag. Um, I have a few stay-at-home dads now who have said to me, I'd love a bag like that to carry around. I don't feel good carrying around the diaper bag. So, you think about it, think of more ways to use them, and um, keep us posted on what you're doing with them. And just remember to have fun, be patient with this. It is a, a hard bag to do, but if you follow everything step by step, you will get your bags done, and you will love them, and the people that you gift them to will love them also. So go ahead and have a great time.